So the person you really want to hear from is, is my colleague, the senior senator from Brigham and Women's, uh, uh, Dr. Claire Tempany. Uh, Claire is our vice chair for research and has been involved uh, personally in prostate cancer research for uh, several decades, pushing the envelope on diagnosis and image-guided therapy, and she's going to show you some very exciting medical developments. Thank you very much, and here's Claire.
We're also getting better at telling the bad prostate cancers, these type here with numbers like this, 4 plus 3, from a 3 plus 3. They're the indolent ones. Those are the ones that maybe you don't die from. And with the thing called the ADC or diffusion imaging, for the first time now, we're beginning to separate out the bad players from the good players, the indolent from the lethal. And that's a huge advance. And this is very new work, just coming out now, more and more papers every month. But the body of work is building. This is very, very exciting, non-invasive imaging of results. There's some pictures from Pete Choiki's group at the NIH. The image on the left, the red circle in it, that black dot is a really bad cancer. If you push the advance button, you'll get the numbers. That's the cancer he has, four plus four, very bad cancer. This one, you can hardly see it at all. And this is a very early cancer, probably an indolent one, that maybe doesn't need any treatment at all and should be a candidate for active surveillance or just watching, watching the way. More data to show the same thing. We'll quickly go through this. So, yeah, the next one. We also used the stage and determined should this man have, have surgery. So this patient had staging MRI scan, which said definitely not. This cancer is coming through the prostate capsule, invading into the sphincter at the bottom. The sphincter is responsible for continence so that it doesn't leak urine. If that prostate came out, he would almost 100% be incontinent after surgery. You don't want to have to do that. This is a candidate for radiation therapy instead. So the biopsy, the big problem with prostate biopsies today, they're generally compared to simply done under ultrasound guidance and can be reasonably effective at hitting a target. But it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. They don't see inside. Can we help? Can we improve on that? There's a low hit rate, as they call it. We miss cancer a lot of the time. Repeated, repeating the ultrasound biopsy happens way too often. We shouldn't be subjecting men to repeated biopsies. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, that's the other side. One more, please. This is a history for you, just to see. A 61-year-old man back in 2000 had a PSA of 12, and you all know over 4 is bad. So he went straight to biopsy, it's negative. Came back two, couple of, almost a year later, his PSA had, had gone up by two points, and another biopsy was negative. April 01, PSA is now 15, another biopsy is negative. 2002, his PSA is now 21. He has cancer for absolute sure. Once it's over 10, it's for sure cancer in there somewhere, but no one can find it. He has another biopsy that's negative. He finally had an MRI scan. We finally did a biopsy for him and he had a successful surgery. So the, if you just go back one second. Well, that's okay. Anyway, so the, the goal here really is to understand that imaging should play a much earlier role. We should be getting involved in imaging earlier up here to see what's going inside that prostate, what's happening in there. And this is what we put together at the Brigham over the last uh, 10 or 15 years is the image guided therapy uh, suite and all kinds of technical devices which allow us to access this. It's a very hard area to get to, but allow us to access with image guidance. We've been using robotics, computer, uh, computer scientists to register images for us. And with Anthony D'Amico and others in radiation oncology, we've been using MRI to guide Reiki therapy, which is the placement of a tiny little seeds of radiation inside the prostate. And we see it better with the MRI than we do with anything else. So let me just go back to that biopsy thing again, and I'm going to go to the next slide if you can. I'll show you what we're now doing at the break. We've just opened we've a poster here that you can see a little bit later. We've just opened a fabulous new suite that's been funded through the NIH called an Amigo facility. Amigo, as you all know, means friend, but it stands for Advanced Multimodal Image Guide Operating Room. So we're now able to see with many new imaging techniques how to get at the prostate, how to deal with brain tumors, how to treat breast cancer, many, many different cancers. But let me just show you this one, which is in a big ma in a magnet now that has wider bore. Many of you have had MRI scans that are really claustrophobic and feel horrible in there, they're really tight. Well, the companies have heard you, and they're now making these a little bit bigger and easier to lie in. So we've adapted that to do biopsies. And with Kamal Tankali, one of my colleagues, we're doing biopsies now, and hopefully, if you can't see anything, you'll see a little yellow dot there. That's a target. That's an area I want to put a needle into because it looks like cancer. And if you see the next image, we layer the images on top of each other. This is another image, the same man showing something different, an ABC value, another target, and another one. And then we can put the needle into these areas now in the red color here. That's the dye. The dye is sitting in there that we inject into the body, and it's showing us again another very abnormal area. So we were able to put our needles into those yellow dots precisely, take the tissue out, give it to the pathologist, and get a diagnosis for that man who unfortunately did get a prostate cancer diagnosis. But he had a diagnosis. He didn't live in that long, 
ESA sort of anxiety phase as well. And as you all heard earlier, ESA stands for prostate specific antigen. But as Jerry Ritchie likes to say, it also stands for patient stimulated anxiety. And it really does, as you all have measured it and you measured numbers, and many of you shared your stories with us today, you know what the anxiety of knowing that number and hoping that it's not going up means to your life. So we've also been trying to help the surgeons do that robotic da Vinci surgery. The robot da Vinci robots are wonderful, but they take away the surgeon's hands, and the surgeon can no longer touch the prostate and can't feel it. But we've been giving them images to display in the operating room in his visual field. So this is the surgeon, excuse me, and here is the visual images that you can see, and now we're giving them the pictures of the prostate to show where the tumor is, where the neurovascular bundles are, and where the urethra is. These are important structures to plan the surgery. And that just I want to show this, this, we can run through these ones pretty quickly. I think I'm almost finished. I don't want to take any more time, so let's move through this. I wanted to finish with just uh, showing you just a little bit of the break of history in image guided therapy. This is a big program for us with Stephen's support, Gary Gottlieb, and Betsy Nagel, and many of the Brigham Hospital. We've been able to build an amazing program there. It started back in 1991. These are many programs funded through federal dollars from the NIH. Uh, to support the development of this with Frank Gilles' leadership in image guided therapy. And the next one I will show you. In, 19, in 2005, we established the National Center for Image Guided Therapy. And this is all about imaging for all diseases, not just prostate cancer. I happen to be the leader of the prostate cancer program. The next one is going to almost finish the last slide. And so this is our Amigo facility that just opened. We'll go to the next one. So I'm going to run through some very pretty pictures of that. Just opened, brand new. Uh, started two weeks ago, the first brain surgery was performed in this suite, and now we've done about four biopsy procedures. What we have here are three rooms, and one of them, if you're looking from the operating room into the MRI room, this is a scanner that's on the ceiling. It can actually move to the patient. So when the patient's asleep under general anesthesia, you don't want to move them, of course, so you bring the magnet to the patient, and you can scan the patient while they're asleep. And we've been able to put this in place, again, thanks to the leadership of the Brigham and Partners and, of course, the National Institute of Health. So I would like to just conclude by saying I think MRI may be our mammogram. We're not quite ready to say that yet, but I still think we need a lot more evidence and data to support that. But we're right there, as many of you have heard already, we're on the cusp of some significant breakthroughs. So thank you very much for your time.